Welcome to the happy hour, everybody, right here at Sirius XM Fly. I'm HB. Oh, my gosh. I know y'all have been hearing me talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. The moment is finally here. I consider them my friends and my brothers. I love each and every one of them for all different kind of reasons but we just gonna jump right into it and let y'all know no big intros because y'all already saw one on sway show that i cannot (laughs) top but anyway ronnie bobby ricky mike they are all here welcome to the happy hour happy hour thank y'all so much i remember the last time we did the show sway and i hosted a special when you guys came by and did it but i'm so happy to have y'all in the happy hour by myself so sway don't have to keep enforcing the bay on y'all right. and i could just right. get straight to new york and boston right. rivalries and right. talk about Up all top, of that East uh, Coast. yeah no doubt ronnie you rocking the celtics yes. gear That's um right. i want to just start with you i'm a low-key celtics fan oh, um i, I am low-key okay well <sighs> I'm a San Antonio Spurs fan. Right. Let's right. start. That, that's just like my diehard team. Love them, and I love them Tim way Duncan. back. You know the big fundamental. Right, I right, right, what right. That is they got maybe five rings, something like easily that. easily five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. They, they, you know they just getting started. Yeah, I love, <laughs> and I love and I love the way they carry themselves right. as a team. Coach Pop, right. everybody. But when it comes to New York and Boston, mm-hmm. how how were you able? Because you guys toured all over the world. How yeah. were you able just to like block out all of the New York talk and just stick to that diehard Boston spirit Listen, that you we, have? We we actually have a direct connect with New York as far as New Edition's career is concerned, right? Talk about it. Um, as amateurs, right? Boston, Massachusetts, making, you know, our way through the ranks, mm-hmm. you know, um, from the start, 78, you know, Bob, Rick, and Mike, and then here comes Ralph, and then here comes Ronnie, right? Winning talent shows. Now we can't even enter talent shows anymore. We have to be the special guest and all of the above, mm-hmm. right? Making our way. But professionally, when Candy Girl came out, where we really got hmm. um, our stripes okay. as far as professionals are concerned was right here in the city, mm. in the boroughs, like starting at 1230 at night. We're in Brooklyn for a show at the skating ring, USA Skating really? Ring, or whatever yeah. that might have been. Boom, we're in Manhattan for the second show at one o'clock or what have you. Right. You mm-hmm. know, like making our way three to five shows a weekend. No, a night, like twice, you know, on a Friday and a Saturday, yeah. like each weekend. So we have a direct connect with New York, man. We got our stripes here. And, you know, we pay respect and mm-hmm. we pay homage to this city because if you can make it here, you already know what the term yeah, is. Yeah, you can make it anywhere. Yeah, yeah, you can make it anywhere, but, you know, our foundation is our city. It's our city. home. That's where yeah. our heart is, Boston. So whether it's the Celtics, you know, the, the Patriots, Patriots. too? Come on, right. y'all. Right, and I'm a little, well, hold on. I'm a, I'm a little <laughs> salty. It's kind of hard for me to say the Patriots right now because the— the whole NFL thing, you it's know, wild. just got me feeling a little yeah. uneasy about watching it and supporting yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, I'm conflicted because it's my favorite sport. Mm-hmm. You know, like we do the the football pools and all that. Yeah. But it's that's a little different. But the Red Sox, you know, the, wow. the Bruins, whatever yeah. our city Sorry, has Yankees. to offer. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bobby, we, you two, you rock it with the Patriots in the whole nine? I'm, I rock with my I rock yeah. with my state, you know. Right. Everything right. everything about Boston for me is is just like it's the real, you know, uh, Patriots, Red Sox, Bruins, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Celtics. Right. I mean, the Harvard Crimson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my you know, God. Everything. Boston UMass College. Men and men, yeah. Yeah. BC Eagles, like, it don't matter. You know? No, and uh, Mike, I know, obviously, with you in basketball in particular, what, did you ever really consider, like, p- uh, playing professionally? Like, how serious were you in, in terms of basketball? I was very serious, had to. I mean, I was... um. Listen, I only knew two shows on Saturday morning, Speed Racer and The Jetsons. That came on at 6.30 <laughs> and 6 o'clock. <laughs> From that point on, I was going up to a barber shop, sweeping the floor to get a free haircut at Mr. Steele's at Progressive. Then I was playing ball. I, I didn't have a phone back then. Right, so right. my mom would get messages from other people. I played in five leagues Saturday morning. I would wow. leave around 7. I would get home from Mission Hill at the last stop, maybe about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. And all I thought about was winning trophies, you know. My thing was how many trophies can I win? You had a lot win? of trophies. Yeah. Really? I had a lot of trophies. Yeah, no, yeah a between, lot of trophies. Between 8 and 12, I won 42. When we got in the business, I picked up 24. 
So crazy. back then as a ball player, the two things that was that meant something to you was your trophies and your haircut. Right. And that's right. what I took pride in. <laughs> right. As they know with my brush and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And my haircut. Yeah. yeah. Ricky, so, what about oh, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. So she so, had my brushes as well. <laughs> Whatever, bro. <laughs> no, he keeps his brush in place and he just moves the <laughs> So to me, I um what I liked about New York was I I just liked it, the flair of the ball, the way the ball was moving on the string. So like Ron was saying and Bob was saying, even though we was from Boston, we always had a little bit of the New York in us. Mm -hmm. right. And I didn't I didn't think I was going to get in the league because I got out of school. But mm -hmm. what we did do, had the because we met in the gym, is we brought basketball to the music business. Right? Yeah. Right. So we are the creators of the celebrity basketball game. Right. Wow. You yes. know, I never when we it. Yeah, when yeah. we were 14, we used to play the WBLS Short Shots. Yeah. Right. So you had these little kids tours, right, playing these grown play men. The radio right. stations. Right. Yeah. And then it went from us playing them each one, to playing one. each one teach one street ball teams, PS two oh one school right. in Harlem. Yeah. Wow. Then it went from them to getting challenges from Luke, Lou um, Lou <laughs> yeah, and them for the full force. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, then we yo, we would play right, ahead, like Ron. we would play real high schools like yo in, in Inglewood. Right. In New Jersey? Inglewood in Jersey? No, in LA. California. In, LA. LA. in the Watts, Jordan High School. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. So Ricky, yeah. basketball is your sport too. Oh, absolutely. That's how we met. I mean, we mm -hmm. was all trying to be, trying to figure out our life on the basketball court. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm the only one that could stick Mike. You know, <laughs> you Nobody know he's, he's, he's to rub cat's head, but I'm in his head, so I know exactly which way he's going. I know which way, you know, what he's going to do. But once we joined up, he could always depend on me but to stand this. on the three-point line, jumper. you know, and, yep. and, and, and knock it down for him. We was the best one and two, two guards. We was number 10 know? and number 11. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. had the I one, two. Knew, you know, you saw some things but I didn't know how real it was so thank y'all for clearing all yeah. of that up oh, yo yeah. Boston stand up right now Massachusetts the love is yeah. real it's right. the happy hour Ronnie Bobby Ricky Mike they hanging out with us today we talking sports food everything music uh, more up next it's okay. the happy hour right here Sirius XF Flam HB hanging out with Ronnie Bobby Ricky Mike and we just talking we got the sports out the way I had to clear it up uh, first and foremost the basketball the football the baseball even hockey even Harvard <laughs> got mentioned so it's real but I noticed something with all of you guys. Everybody has on a wedding ring, which yeah. I didn't realize. Um, mm -hmm. You all are married. Yes. yes. Everybody. Happily. Yeah. Happily yeah. married. 12 years going on 13 for me. Hey, Shamari, my beautiful wife. Six years going on 20. Right. <laughs> How does that work? Do that math for me, right. Bobby. Tell me. Okay. I don't want to get me to do a math. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm 11, I'm 11 going on 12, October 14th. Yes. Wow. Uh, happy yeah. early anniversary, Ricky. And it'll be uh, 14 years for me, September 18th, which is also my birthday. Happy birthday. Happy Thank early you. anniversary as well. 17 years I just celebrated. Um, wow. August wow. 17th. Yes, Thank yes. you. Yes. And I put up a recipe um, on my Instagram for marriage with just some recipes. And I said that I think that you have to keep you know God first in terms right. of prayer we pray Absolutely. together not long prayers but very honest prayers Absolutely. so yes. that was one of the things number two to keep folks out of our business mm -hmm. um, a lot of times family and friends you just gotta kinda deal with things internally and mm -hmm. don't take them outside of the door number three I said we give each other space in terms of physical space not sexually but mm -hmm. physically like if I want to watch Martin or Chopped and he want to see power he stays downstairs in the man cave I stay upstairs that's and dope. we just kinda that's come right. to that's a happy like my agreement house. there you go <laughs> <laughs> I think it's everybody else. Um, number four, I said that we compromise. He doesn't always want to go to certain things. I can't drag him out to all the baby showers and the weddings and all right. that, and vice versa. Right. So we compromise. If we do have to go to a special event together, we agree before we leave the house. Two hours is our max, and we out after right. that. We don't care what's happening. <laughs> right. You know what, Heather, speaking of that, one thing I could say about marrying somebody that you love is mm. that they they mirror something back to you that you sometimes don't even see in yourself. Right. Talk about it. Like, you know, my wife was 11 years younger, but mm. um, her mental game is so strong that where I was in life, I, I didn't need a good look or a trophy, which she is, mm -hmm. you know, on site. But she's so sharp mentally that her 11 years behind me puts her a few years in front of me in certain things in life. So I was falling in love with her mental and 
taking that in because everything else about it, you know, it's trophy material. She's beautiful. You know, she dressed nice. She's flow right. She's very nice, right. hospitable to people. Mm -hmm. But what people don't realize, her personality is quiet. But she's like she's like Dish Network. She's a satellite of so much information. Mm. And um, she just said something to me that um, no woman ever said. And she said, I ain't going to be no baby mama. Right. She said, yeah. you want to get Dish, we're going to have to do it the right way. Right. right. And, and, and it shook the shit out of me because I wasn't even thinking about, you know, going on the other level yet. We just getting to know each other, but she was laying the groundwork on how mm -hmm. I needed to be a man to approach her. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about it one night after rehearsal, I just realized like, what am I doing? Like, where am I going? I, I didn't did it all. I didn't, I didn't had the best, been did that and third. Right. And I just said, mom, I'm ready. She said, you feel it? I said, I know I am because I need some kids. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna have no kids <laughs> with Tisha unless I do everything yeah, I'm supposed right. to do. Right. And um, the crazy thing is, when I was going to get my ring after the tour, he was going to get That's right. his ring. Really? Uh -huh. In Chicago. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. we was in Chicago. I said, where you going, bro? Yo, I'm about to go buy this ring. Yeah. I said, well, that's what I'm about to yeah. go do, go uh -huh. buy a ring. So we actually got engaged the same year. Yeah. We just got married a year apart. Different right. time. Wow, yeah, thank yeah. you for Mike sharing. Mike was on the East Coast over in the Bahamas. In the I Bahamas. We was on the West Coast over in Hawaii just... Yeah, you know, doing we it different we proposed. Ways, yeah, mm -hmm. I proposed right in um, I proposed in church. Right. Did you really? Yeah, well, I, I took on vacation. I, I I saw pops in the backyard. He's like Bob. Her father's like Bob to the to hundred. What Bob be doing? He's like that, just right. real energetic. <laughs> he back there, he back there with the smoke all in his face, cooking burgers. <laughs> and I asked him, "Can I, you know, the proper way?" Wait, boom, boom, yeah. boom. Pop, pop the mic, and he was like, "Yo, I appreciate that, young yeah. fella." So we we handled that, and then we went to church, and I had asked T. J. Morrison over in the Bahamas. Can I have a minute on the mic? He didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. Young fella, you come to the island, you want to kick my mic? You know, he talking to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes. So without her knowing, I went up there to think I was going to talk about stuff in there. And I just dropped to the knee and did it. And little did we know, this particular day in the Bahamas, when we went back to the Atlantis, Everyone was clapping in the lobby yeah. mm -hmm. because on this particular day it was broadcasted on television. <laughs> wow. Are you serious? Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes, congratulations. You a smart man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so right. we ended That's up beautiful. getting the videotape of me doing it on oh, television because wow. it's on television in the, the Bahamas. See, we still learning stuff about yeah, it. Yeah, you're still I, I learning. Never well, I never heard that story. Me though. either. I'm like, y'all are yes. sharing so much with me. Right. Thank you so much. I've mm. never heard any of these stories. Bobby, what was the deal sealer for you? What made you say, because you had been married before, what made you say, um, I'm going to do this again? Just, oh, like Mike was saying, a mirror image of yourself. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you see... Um, so much that you ain't in somebody mm -hmm. and so much that um, you are in that person. Mm -hmm. And I just know, I, I just knew that this woman was strong. I knew this woman was, um, she was fearless and, you know, feisty and, you know, I like that shit. You know? yeah. <laughs> For some strange reason, I, I, I like crazy women. Mm -hmm. um, not saying my wife's crazy, but right? She, but a she good is, crazy. She, yeah, she yeah. a good crazy, yeah, but yeah, she yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I was just I was just in awe with her. You know, I I had I had a crush on her for a long time, and then you know we became friends, and it was just friends and friends, and then friends and friends, and then all of a sudden I was just like, you know what? I think I love this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. And I asked her to marry me. I was in, we was in, um, I believe, um, Florida. We was in Florida on, on tour. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, we were on stage, um, heads of state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was like, you know, you know, I had already bought the ring. I had mm -hmm. bought the ring um, a while back. And I was, you know, just waiting on the right time and we was right. on stage and I just I turned around and looked at her and my son and told her to come out and got down on the knee like Mike said and popped that question and wow. she said yes right. Ricky I want to speak to you about something that Bobby said and I noticed Mike said the same thing mm -hmm. um 
What is this waiting thing uh, with men? Um, and maybe I'm not saying you waited, but right. he said he had the ring right. ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, Mike mentioned, you know, you you realize, you start to realize it. I, I've known women that have been in relationships um, five years with the same guy, right. six years with the same mm -hmm. guy, and it's like Heather, I don't know what he's waiting for. I asked the guy, "What's going on with y'all?" Right. Well, well, you know, I got to get this right. I got to get my paper right. I'm trying to get this house. What is this waiting thing? I think um, for me, uh, what yes. it was was um, when I was, you know, and a, a quick story though. When I was dating my wife before mm -hmm. we got married, I was still like a player. I was still dating a bunch of other women. Mm. But my conscience was heavy on me, and I honestly, I felt like God was telling me, I need you to be honest with her about who you really are and what's going on. Wow. You know, and I kept hearing it, kept hearing it. And so one day we sat down, and I said, look, I said, I asked her, I said, do you love me? And she said, yes. I was like, well, let me give you the real me so you can then... You know, really love me. See if you <laughs> if you really love me, and I mm -hmm. and I just and I just gave her everything. You know, told her everything, all the, all of my challenges, everything I was doing. You know, who I was dating, just all of it. I I just spilt it, and it was heavy. You know, even though I felt like a weight was lifted off of me, it like crushed her. But you know, and we stopped talking for a while, and then one mm -hmm. day, <clears throat> you know, we still talk on the phone here and there. One day, she came to pick me up at the airport. And I saw her in the baggage claim, and I and I don't get this all the time, you know. How people say, you know, God told me this or whatever, but I walked in the baggage claim, and I saw her standing, and I heard it as clear as day. God said, "That's your wife," mm. and it took me probably about another year or so before I finally asked her, because I but I kept hearing it because we were having conversations about like, well, where are you going with your life? What are you doing? And mm -hmm. it was just more of a decision like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. We need to take this to the next level. We need to really just go on and bring God into this and make this a covenant and do it the right way. So it was more of a discussion that we had and deciding that we wanted to get married before I actually, you know, we went to the beach on a date on a picnic one day right. and I, you know, got down on one knee and, and asked her. But for me, it was like the scary part was just thinking, you know, I want to be responsible. I want to be able to, pr to provide, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because you have this idea of what you think a marriage is supposed to be like as a husband. You know, I'm supposed to be able to provide the home and, you know, provide a good living. And when you can't at that time. And then the other scary thought I think a lot of people don't really talk about for me coming from the life that I was living was like, damn, this is the only woman I'm going to be with for the yeah. rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a scary ass thought. Like seriously, as a man for me, it was just thinking like, wow, really? Like this is it? Well, okay. All yeah. right. And then you, you know, just, you never really, I think it's an act of faith mm -hmm. in a sense. You just, you know, you just step out on faith and then all the other things are just choices that you're making along the way. Let, let, mm -hmm. let, let's be honest though. Uh, the, that waiting thing is different for a celebrity than a nine to five guy. Mm -hmm. A nine to five guy might be waiting because he's trying to really get the right ring or a mm -hmm. ring that's appropriate because he right. just wants to have her to have the best he could with what he's working mm -hmm. with. Right. With an entertainer, you know, you get all these people in your head, which didn't happen to me because I didn't do this. Mm -hmm. right. You know, yo, well, you know, be careful, son, about, you know, just marrying in without no paperwork. You know, you don't want to be like such and such. You see how they get down. Right. So you get all these other people affecting your love mm. on the first reason how you felt the feeling. Right. That's making you think about, am I going to go in this or should I sit her down and say, well, look, you know, before we do this, you know, you, you're only going to get this. Now you're talking about a, an agreement and an arrangement with someone. And and you and some people hold on to that because I've heard that, you know, with people in the business, they wanted to take the next step, but they didn't know if, how to bring it up to the person. Yeah. And I I, I looked at it, and I'm sure Ron want to talk about his testimony. I, I looked at it like, well, what I got right now, and what she got right now ain't got nothing to do with what we're going to build together. Mm -hmm. And for if anything happens, and my purpose of wanting to take the next step is, one, because I love you. Mm -hmm. And two, I don't want to have children with other women. So that's why my first child, my second child, my third child, my fourth child right. is with my wife. Because right. I'm the type of person, I'm a mama's boy. Right. And 
All I thought about Tell is it. different women calling my mother to drop kids off. I couldn't put my mama <laughs> through that. Do that. <laughs> you feel me? I, I told her every day, <laughs> mama, real. you're not going to have that. She can't come because she here. Wait till she leaves. We don't mm. do it like that. Mm. She, mm. she, she too good of a mama for me to be that type of a son. Yeah, crazy, that's, crazy. It's the happy hour right it's here. Serious. Well, are we still fly. happy? We got to be yeah. happy. Yo, that's the yeah. best. I've never be heard it broken down like that, but I don't think people think about their moms and stuff because that's yeah. what happens. And the barbecues be a disaster. It's right. like the baby mama <laughs> in the car, this one out yeah. there. We're like, you were like, we're Keisha. She can't come in. It's a mess. So, no, I'm glad you touched on that. It's the happy hour. We got more with Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, Mike up yes. next. It's the happy hour. We're having fun right now, for real. Just having real yeah. conversation, yeah. too. Real this conversation. is crazy. Thank y'all for sharing, Ronnie. I got to get to you as well in terms of your marriage because right. it's something that I had noticed. I was like, this can't be real. It's four black men in here proudly rocking their yes. wedding bands like you right. just it's not right. something that you see a lot and um you had mentioned on the Sway in the Morning show that um you hadn't had any kids mm -hmm. um until recently right. um your marriage what tell me how all of that took place if you can wow um man cuz if, if for lack of a better word you waited till right. later you know, to do I mean, all of this. I we mean, were, we were actively trying to have kids, you know, mm -hmm. for uh, some years. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, you know, it just wasn't happening mm -hmm. um, throughout the first 10 years of our marriage, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, after, you know, honestly, the first six, you know, six months, you know, the gloves came off to yeah. a certain extent of, of our relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Um but it just never happened, happened, right? And we went through a challenge in our relationship where it almost, basically, it brought us to the brink of divorce, right? Um, where we were sitting down at a table, you know, with Word, Microsoft, Microsoft Word open, trying to figure out how we were going to split this little pot that we had at the end of the day, right? From furniture on down, right? Really? Um, but... And that was before having kids, right? But ultimately, I think God puts you through some challenging times to see mm. if you will break before you get to your ultimate blessing, right? right. And we were separated, and this is our marriage and uh, being marriage ambassadors now and being able to do things like the Married for Life walk and, and all of those things. We had to walk through the mud, right? and come around the corner and get back to some of the ingredients that you talked about in the recipe for success in a relationship, mm -hmm. like communication, right? Yeah. And speaking to each other's love languages and paying attention to each other and active listening, you know, not sitting in limbo waiting to fire back. Ultimately, right. we had to learn some of these things as a foundation to get around the corner to our ultimate blessing. And once we got through counseling, coaching, and um, recommitting to each other, you know, we turned that corner, man, and our kids came, you know? So mm. there's a testimony mm. in, when you get married, you're gonna go through some things ultimately, but do you take that as an opportunity to give up? Like we have this microwave mentality nowadays where we want it now. We want it to be so perfect now, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, and we don't want to go through the work of setting a foundation in place to keep it, it you yeah. know, right, ultimately. And I love the fact that it took a minute, you know, for, mm -hmm. like you said, what is this wait? You know, um, I moved to Atlanta. My wife was on the phone with me, um, like, to the wee hours of the mo my, uh, of the morning through challenges in my life when my grandmother passed, mm. right? She wasn't my wife at the time. She was just somebody that was there, there, right? It took me a minute. Moved to Atlanta, you know, like Rick said, you know, I got to sow my royal oats. I'm still kind of <laughs> young, you yeah, know. I'm like, yeah. yo, this is a new city. Like, I'm not, I, I was never one of those individuals. And to make a long story short, you know, we've seen guys that would tell a, a girl anything that they wanted to hear to get it, you know? Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I would never do that. So I was always honest, like Rick said, like, look, I'm just not ready. 
you know, if you want to play a little bit of house, you know, potentially until I get ready, then that's cool. But then there was a moment and she gave me an ultimatum, which leads to what Mike was talking about. Like, look, you know, I love you. You know, I know the man that I want to be with for the rest of my life. And unless you believe that I'm that person for you, I can't, you know, stay around anymore and pretend that, you know, this shit isn't. Is, is not hurting me, you mm-hmm. know, knowing that you're running around because you want to do this, that, and the third. And I just kind of sat and thought about and reflect and reflected over the last couple years of our existence, few years of our existence, and felt like, okay, you know, now is the time before I lose something else, else. that may be an ultimate blessing. Mm-hmm. You know? And I want to say this because I know you're going to say something else. Heather. To me, Listening to all this, I don't think we ever talked to anybody nah. the way we're talking to you. Nah, so you're getting this for the first right. time. But yeah. I, I just want you to know what we go through in this music business with each other's brothers and the groups mm-hmm. and the six members, the five minutes for all of our decisions after a while was based on who we're doing it for. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I got mm-hmm. four girls now. So right. oh, wow. I'm God only bless. really Michael Bivens <laughs> on stage. Right. I'm really daddy and I'm right. hubby yeah. off stage. Exactly. Right. So. All I want to do is to get what I'm supposed to get so that they can have a better life. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. all of this trying to, you know, be selfish, looking in the mirror and watching myself all day, I, I don't do it for that reason. So when something ain't going right with New Edition, my quickest way to get out of it is it's going to affect my kids. So I need to go do RBRM. Right. right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, Bob, you ready? We're on your record. It's simple yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't really yeah. got Something time to be choices. a therapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. I got school that starts next Wednesday, yeah, no, so that's right. more sneakers for Savannah. <laughs> Charlotte needs what you know. I got all this others. I don't need right. to worry about who don't want to go rock. Yeah. Right. And if you really are a black man in today's side and you watching the news. You better get as much money as you can and do something with it. Right. But more importantly, if you're a real man that walks through the door, then you protect your family by That's building right. the family and doing the things the man's supposed to do right. for their for family. His family. Right. Yo, I'm ending on that note. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, nothing yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. I nothing thank else. y'all so yeah. much. Thank, thank you, you so for much. having like, a different it, conversation it, with us. Yeah. Like, we really yeah, thank you, Heather. No, thank you, know? thank you so much. No, mm-hmm. thank y'all. And I mean, we coming back for part two. They trying to rush us. Right. This ain't nothing but the beginning. <laughs> this you. is the scratch of the right. happy hour. Thank you so much, man. RBRM, make sure you go to the website to check out for the tour. Dates are available from September 6th all the way to November 10th. Y'all know November, I party hard. That's my birthday month. Yes. So right. make sure Scorpio is yeah. yeah, So right y'all make sure y'all check them out. Thank you guys. God Thank bless you. God bless. Thank you for sharing.